you're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to another episode of Red Eye Raw. Today I'm talking about that more serious topic, which I debated about last time, but I'm doing it this time. Now, as I've always said, I am not a very political person, and I don't intend for this to be a political video, nor do I ever intend for this channel to become politicized. However, I will warn you, there are some things I might say in this that maybe could be construed as political. I don't really view them that way. I view them as very broad statements. But even then, I have a feeling that some people will probably disagree, and that is fine, because one of these core principles I'm going to talk about is accepting the fact that people are going to disagree and not judging them for it. That's a large part of it. But, that said, I'm not going to be delving into hot-button issues. Don't worry, you're not going to hear me talk about, you know, abortion or gun control or, you know, other things like that. Um, but uh, I am going to talk very broadly about what I consider to be my core principles, my core values, the things that I personally think are very important. And again, if you disagree, that is totally fine. If you don't want to watch this video, I don't blame you. Go ahead and tune off. So I'll start with the first one, which I consider to be one of the most important, and that is I am 100% anti-censorship, 100% full free speech. I, there's no middle ground on that for the most part. For, uh, I think the only real exceptions are uh, directly inciting violence, you know, saying, hey, let's go do this to this person and, you know, cause problems, or doxing or swatting. Those are where I draw the line. Um, and with those, it gets kind of muddy what is and isn't doxing. I'd say steer clear that whole hornet's nest altogether, but there is a fine line with that, and I say don't even go fucking close to it, but... Regardless, those are what I consider the exceptions, right? And because I am 100% anti-censorship, that means I don't like things like obscenity laws. I think obscenity laws are the antithesis of that. Um, for instance, that guy that got arrested back in 2003, uh, I believe it was 2003, it might have been 2008, it's been a while since I re read this story, uh, but that guy that got arrested for selling a copy of Demon Beast Invasion to a guy in a comic shop who was an undercover cop. They didn't arrest the comic shop, they didn't arrest anyone who stocked it or anything like that, they arrested the clerk who was just doing his fucking job and ID'd the guy beforehand. I don't agree with that. I think obscenity laws are stupid and make no goddamn sense, because there is no clear definition of obscenity, number one. Number two, what's obscene to someone might not be obscene to someone else. And number three, it's fictional. Why, why do you care so goddamn much? In addition to that, I also do not fundamentally believe in the concept of hate speech. Let me clarify that, because some people might be raising red flags because of that already. I do think that speech can be hateful. I do think there are certain things that, in polite society, you wouldn't say to someone. However, I don't believe in banning words of any kind, any way, shape, or form, no matter what they are. I've used my share of offensive terms on this channel multiple times, and I've allowed m offensive terms on this channel multiple times. So, I'd be a major hypocrite if I didn't believe that context was what was important. Because at the end of the day, I think that's what matters. If you're going out of your way to be an asshole to someone, you're just a fucking dick. Um, but if you're saying something edgy or offensive in, let's say, a joke, or you're talking to your friends and it's banter, uh, or you're giving an example, for instance, quoting something or something like that, then it's not really offensive in my opinion. In fact, I don't really get offended by speech to begin with. I can understand why people would, and I understand how you need to be tactful when dealing with people. And I understand, you know, the need to maybe filter yourself in like a workplace scenario, for instance, and I understand that. But I fundamentally don't think that any words are inherently hate speech on their own. It's the context and what they're used for. Now, there's some words you may argue what the hell would be an acceptable context for that, and that's not for me to decide. That's the thing. I, I don't think that that is for us to decide, really. I think that is something that is very dependent on the situation. I do believe that people should be polite and shouldn't say things intentionally to piss people off. But just because I think that's how people should behave doesn't mean that that's how people are legally obligated to behave, nor do I think that should be the case. Essentially, what I'm saying is, unless it is actually illegal, such as inciting violence, then I don't think that it should be considered, you know, not free speech. Free speech is very important. It's a very slippery slope. You step on it and go down it, 
you're just going to end up eventually making it so that your speech is super duper, like, restrained. Now that said, do I think words should have consequences? Social consequences, sure. I don't agree with legal consequences for words, again, unless it is something that is, you know, factually illegal. And there are a lot of gray areas with that. Um, for instance, let me give an example, right? Like, let's say threats. Like, let's say someone's making a threat on someone's life. I don't think that should inherently get someone arrested. If it is a credible threat, however, I do think that the person should at least be, have, you know, them have an eye on waiting in case that person decides to act. I don't say act immediately based on the threat alone, but maybe keep an eye on them and be prepared for them to jump if they have made what is considered to be a credible threat. Like some little kid saying, oh, I'm going to kill you on Xbox Live is very different than an ex-crazy boyfriend saying, I'm going to come and beat the shit out of you for breaking up with me. There's a very big difference. One actually could likely happen, and one is some little kid on the other side of the fucking world from some other little kid. But when I say social consequences, let me give an example, right? Let's say someone is spewing a bunch of what would many would call hate speech. I would just call it hateful speech because, again, I think hate speech as a concept doesn't really exist. It is not a separate thing from speech. But I do think there can be hateful speech. Let's say someone's going on this big rant talking about how they don't like gay people. Well, I would think that person was an asshole and not want to associate with them. I wouldn't think, oh, I need to take away his right to have those opinions, because that's not my right to do. But I would say, I'm probably not going to talk to that guy. If he held those views, right? And that's not true. I probably would still talk to him to try and figure out why he thinks that way. I fundamentally wouldn't agree with it, but most people in polite society are going to say, fuck that guy, let's not associate with him. And I probably would eventually, too. I'd probably ask for, you know, some clear ideas on his motivations. But, ultimately, I wouldn't try to restrict his speech. I would just say, well, you're fucking wrong. And I'd use my free speech to tell them, well, you're fucking wrong and you're a fucking idiot. That's how I believe that hateful speech should be combated, is with rebuttals. You give them statistics, you give them numbers, you tell them they're fucking stupid, you tell them to get the fuck away from you, stuff like that. It doesn't have to be super eloquent, you can tell them straight off, get fucked, you're a piece of shit. Because that, again, I consider free speech too. So, it goes both ways. And that's what I think the correct response would be, is someone who's being a piece of shit, you tell them you're a piece of shit, and then you leave them alone. That's the end of it. People, assholes are always going to exist, no matter what. But I think you get the idea on free speech, where I stand with that, right? The second thing, I don't agree with the us or them mentality. I never have, I never will. I will never think, oh, you disagree with me, therefore we cannot be friends, therefore I cannot talk to you, therefore we cannot have a discussion. I never will agree with that. I will never think, you know, oh, you're not with me, you're against me. I'm never going to think that. I think that's a ridiculous thing to do, and it's incredibly divisive. I watch several people who I have heard express opinions that I fundamentally disagree with, and I still enjoy those people's content. Now, I have drawn the line in some cases when it negatively affects the content, but that doesn't mean I think that they shouldn't be able to make that content, because I think anyone should be able to make anything as long as it's not illegal. So if someone has negatively affected their content, then I may no longer wish to consume said content. That doesn't mean I'll never want to consume said content again should the person improve, or should the person move in a different direction that I would maybe, maybe vibe with a little more. But just because I no longer vibe with it doesn't mean I should go and be like, oh, this person should stop this content. No, I'm not going to fucking do that. There are several people I've seen that have fallen apart and ruined their content, in my opinion. But that was their decision, and I don't think that they should not have a place to uh, put it. I don't think, like, for instance, I don't believe in deplatforming, which I guess goes back to the whole free speech thing. Um, but uh, just because someone disagrees with me doesn't mean that I think any less of them. Um, there are plenty of people who disagree with me, and I try to view things from both angles. So, there are many hot-button issues, which I'm not going to get into very deeply here, which I have talked very calmly with people who very strongly disagree with me on them. And we've had calm discussions, and it's a complicated issue. There are many things that are complicated issues in which I can, I can, emphasize, with, I can empathize with both points of view. Even though I do ultimately have my biases and my leanings, I can, empathize, I can empathize with people who hold other viewpoints, and I can understand those viewpoints and how people come to those conclusions. 
Because everything in this world is a matter of perspective. You know, you look at something one way, you're going to come to one conclusion. Someone looks at it from another way, they're going to come to a completely different conclusion. And if you're both very angry and set in your ways, then you're going to be like, no, you're wrong, fuck you, which I don't agree with. Now, granted, have I had those thoughts before? Absolutely I have. I'd be lying to tell you I haven't. There are certain viewpoints which I have found reprehensible. But just because I've found them reprehensible doesn't mean I don't think someone should be allowed to have those viewpoints, nor do I think it necessarily makes them a bad person. For instance, I get comments in my comment section all the time saying things that I very much disagree with and straight up insult me. But I don't believe in removing comments. The only time comments ever get removed is either the YouTube filter does it, in which case I either have to approve it or you have to go into newest first because by default it shows you top comments, which filters out potentially inappropriate comments. So unfortunately there's not a whole lot I can do about that, but they are still up there if you switch to newest first. Um, but when I, uh, when, the only times I have ever removed comments myself is when it's a spam bot. Um, if someone was, like, doxing or something in my comments, then I would remove them. That is, that is another thing I would do. But ultimately what I'm saying is, just because I disagree with someone doesn't mean I can talk, I can't talk to them, I can't enjoy what they do. Like, I can separate art from artist, for instance, right? I love Jeepers Creepers, one and two. I hate three. Three was a bad movie. But that doesn't mean I condone... The past actions of Vil Victor Salva. That doesn't mean I like what he has done as a person. But I do like those two particular movies he has done, which were done years after what he actually did. And obviously what he actually did was reprehensible, and he did get in trouble with the law for it. That said, that doesn't mean I can't enjoy his movies. It just means I don't agree with his decisions as a person. But moving on to the next fundamental value I hold, I'm a very firm believer in redemption. I very much believe that people can redeem themselves, even if people fuck up big time. The thing is, obviously some things are much harder to redeem than others, and th some things require potentially a legal process, obviously. But ultimately, I am a firm believer in redemption. I feel like we kind of have to be as humans because we all make mistakes. Some people make very, very bad mistakes that... Redemption is a very difficult thing. But, I do fundamentally believe in second chances. Um, obviously, there are certain things that people may not, you know, want to be redeemed, or people may have gone past a perceived point of no return. And I definitely do think there is some validity to that. But, I can still feel sympathy for someone. Like, for instance, take Jeffrey Dahmer did a lot of bad shit. Horrible person in the eyes of people, like if you look at it from a moral and ethical standpoint, right? But he genuinely seemed remorseful to me in the last days of his life, and he accepted his fate. And his incarceration and ultimate death was potentially part of that perceived redemption. Now, do I think that redeemed him? Not necessarily, but I can still feel sympathy for him, even though he was a serial killer and a cannibal. So, that's, that's the whole thing, right? Is, I still believe in trying to understand one another, even if someone is condemned by society. Now, granted, you take Ted Bundy, that fucker didn't want to be redeemed. Like, granted, he was very honest and, and forthwith when, when it came to his interviews before his execution, but why wouldn't he be? He was a narcissist. Ted Bundy had no remorse for what he did. Jeffrey Dahmer, I feel, might have. Now, maybe that's just a matter of perception, and I obviously don't think that justifies Jeffrey Dahmer's actions either. But I still see him as a human. And that's another thing, is I don't believe in dehumanizing people, regardless of anything. Because I feel like we start dehumanizing people, it gives us an excuse to be cruel. Now, obviously, serial killers are an extreme example. But there is plenty of other dehumanization you see on a daily basis. For instance, someone has a political ideology different than your own. A lot of people may think of those people as less than human. I personally would not do that, but some people do. And I'm not going to name off a huge list of examples, but I don't believe in dehumanizing someone for any reason. I do think we can want justice to be served against something, and we can not want to associate with someone 
or think someone is perhaps reprehensible in their views or actions, but I don't think we should view them as less than human because of it, because I think that's a dangerous mindset to have. Um, and I think that many people do come to that conclusion when it comes to people who disagree with them in today's day and age. On both sides of the spectrum, I'm not picking sides here, I'm saying people do that and I don't agree with it. Because ultimately I feel like the worst elements of us is because of the fact that we're human. And dehumanizing is antithetical to that. It's like, oh, you did this, therefore you're less than human. It's like, no, you did this, therefore you are human. Uh, because to error is human. I mean, that's the old idiom, right? And that's not to say that I think every action anyone has ever done is justified. Absolutely not. And I definitely think that, you know, some people can't be around polite society if they're, like, incredibly violent or things like that, right? Serial killers being incarcerated makes sense because they'll probably just kill again. I don't think that's a, you know, a predetermined, you know, conclusion, but it is a very likely possibility. So that's why it does make sense to do that, right? To lock someone up for something like that. But obviously that's, again, an extreme. I'm saying people dehumanize each other for the smallest things. Um, you know, differences in opinion, differences in religion, differences in, you know, race, uh, sexual orientation. It happens all the time. Like, I do think that some of these things are lesser than people think they are, but they are real issues. And they do happen. And I don't agree with it no matter what standpoint someone's coming from. But I think I've rambled on enough about that particular thing. Let's move on to the next issue. I do not believe in using violence in order to get your point across. I, no matter what cause someone stands for, I don't agree with it. Like, I only believe violence should be used in self-defense. And obviously, you know, things like war are a whole other t topic which we're not going to get into. Because that's kind of, you know, a hot-button issue, number one. And number two, it's a complicated issue again. I don't think that there's a right or wrong answer to that, unfortunately. I wish there was, because in an ideal world, war would never be necessary. But that's a whole other issue. What I'm saying is, I don't care what cause you think you stand for. Using violence, destroying things, hurting people, you know, stealing stuff, I will never agree with that because of, you know, ideas. Never, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with it. Um, and I, I went into that in my whole riots video, right? Like, I don't agree with just because you say you're fighting for a good cause, you get the, you suddenly get a free pass to be a destructive criminal. I don't agree with that. And, uh, you know, some people might have a problem that I don't agree with that, and that's fine. I'm not here to tell you what to think, but I don't agree with it. I don't agree with destroying shit, I don't agree with hurting people, no matter what your cause is. I'm not saying that's exclusive to this thing. If it was a cause I agreed with, I still wouldn't agree with that. I still wouldn't agree with doing that. Um, and lastly, I'm going to end off here by talking about the whole, you know, voting with your wallet thing, right? So, if I don't want to support something, I won't view it. I won't buy it. I won't, you know, give it my support. That's my way of saying, hey, I don't agree with this. Like Funimation, for example, right? I don't agree with that. I don't agree with a lot of their choices as a company. There's many choices. I've gone over a few of them in the past. But point is, I don't agree with a lot of that. So I don't buy Funimation merchandise. Now, I do occasionally buy Funimation stuff if it is used, because they no longer get the money from that. And speaking of Funimation, that actually does bring me to my real final topic, which is, I believe in due process regardless of the situation. I don't believe in just mindlessly coming to a foregone conclusion without seeing all of the evidence and having the whole process play out. I hear a bunch of things said about someone. I'm not just going to immediately say, oh, that person is now a terrible person. No, I'm going to say, okay, where is the evidence? What does the facts suggest? What is, wh where is the proof of this person doing this, that, and the other? Right? So, I don't agree with it. And truth be told, a lot of the time... A lot of this stuff just doesn't bother me anymore when I hear this, because, unfortunately, because people are so willing to do this kind of thing nowadays, like, willing to come out and just hate mob on someone because of some perceived wrongdoing, I think it's devalued actual wrongdoing and devalued the whole thing to the point where I've become desensitized to it. I hear something about someone, I just goes in through one ear out the other. I don't fucking care anymore. 
because and, and that's an unfortunate truth because it shouldn't be that way but unfortunately i think these movements that try to push oh just immediately come to a conclusion have actually had the opposite effect you know something comes forward about some celebrity i've I, i've i've watched for years or something and they say, oh, this person did this, and now they're a bad person. We should cancel them. And again, I don't agree with cancel culture, period. I don't believe in going back and digging up someone's past to try and destroy them. I think that's bullshit. I think that it happens way too often nowadays for stupid reasons, too. Completely innocuous reasons that don't matter. Like, uh, the other day, they tried to cancel Domino's because Domino's tweeted out a thank you to, at the time, just a regular customer who became some political per I don't fucking know what they were I don't care because it doesn't matter what they are this person could be fucking Adolf Hitler and it wouldn't matter because at the time they weren't Adolf Hitler number one they were just another customer who they didn't recognize number two who the fuck gives a shit if Domino's is thanking a customer because thanking a customer does not mean that they agree with that customer on anything they didn't know who this person was that's the other thing right is um I don't believe in guilt by association. I never have, never will. I don't think that just because someone is associated with someone or because someone comes from a particular like family or upbringing, that necessarily makes them a bad person or makes them reflective of that upbringing or the people they associate with. Just because I talk to someone doesn't mean I agree with them on anything. Because I have plenty of friends that I disagree with on several big issues. And that's why I fundamentally don't agree with, you know, identity politics, you know, saying, and again, this one might be a little bit more hot button than a lot of this, but I don't agree because someone is, you know, one way or another, that initially makes them bad, inherently makes them bad. I don't believe in the concept of all white people are racist. I think that itself is a racist statement. Um, I don't agree with that mentality. I just fundamentally reject it. I don't believe in the concept of original sin. I do not agree with that. I don't think that guilt passes on through generational things. Do I think that impact can be felt through certain things? For instance, if you're from a poor family, are you more likely to be poor? Absolutely, fucking lutely I do. That is something that can happen. I definitely acknowledge that. But I don't think that inherently makes someone who comes from a more successful upbringing a bad person inherently. I very much believe in individualism. I think your choices as a person, what you do with yourself, your character, is what determines what kind of person you are. And I don't even necessarily believe in the concept of a good or bad person. I definitely do think there are people who I find morally sound or morally re reprehensible, but those are based on my own subjective morals. I don't necessarily believe in an objective morality. I do think that there is a consensus on certain things, you know, like you know, murder, assault, things like that, those things are considered bad, and I would agree with that. But that is because of our own perception. Now, do I think that our perception is correct? Yes, personally, I do. Obviously, murder is wrong. Um, you know, it's like, um, it's just, you know, I mean, it's, it's common sense. But at the end of the day, that is a subjective thing that most of us come to. Unfortunately, some people don't, which leads to violent actions. Anyway, I've rambled on and on enough here. The point is, I do have my own set of morals, and that's what this video is about, right? I think that, ultimately, violence is wrong, regardless of the cause. Uh, I think it should only be used in self-defense. I think that, ultimately, redemption is something people can achieve. Maybe not everyone is redeemable, but I think that a lot of the time that comes down to people's mindsets. You know, a lot of people don't want to be redeemed. A lot of people push it further and further. I think that ultimately we are all individuals and our own character should determine what people view of us. And ultimately I don't think it matters how people view us. I think it matters, you know, how we view ourselves and the world. But I think that, you know, free speech is very important. I don't believe in guilt by association or original sin. I don't believe in judging or dehumanizing people based on arbitrary traits such as, you know, race, religion, political beliefs, any sort of belief, really, or anything like that. Obviously, there are actions that people take which I don't agree with and which I do think are reprehensible, and I do think, in some cases, do justify punishment. Obviously, there are plenty of reasons that someone should get arrested. There are plenty of reasons that things like that happen. That makes sense to me. I do, I am a believer in, you know, order and that idea. 
I don't necessarily have a crazy sense of justice like some might. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, I think that real rehabilitation is more important than punishment. But I do think they can go hand in hand. And I do think both can be important, depending on what the issue is. But obviously, some things are not as bad as other things, and some things are very bad, and, you know, need some sort of action in order to, you know, rectify certain instances. But yeah, at the end of the day, I have a very live and let live mentality. I think that ultimately all of us can coexist provided that we just get in the mindset of that. I think that all of this divisiveness and, you know, basically coming to some sort of creed or pact or cause is ultimately bad because it just turns us against each other. And that's not to say that I don't think there are just causes out there, because there certainly are. But yeah, I've been Fugitive Red Eye, and if you've disagreed with that video, that is perfectly fine. I hold no ill will towards you, and I understand completely. Anyway, have a good one.